Wall art is a very popular niche on Etsy. There's many, many stores that do really well with this. One shop particularly stood out to me during my research, which is this one right here. They literally only started four months ago and they've already accumulated over two thousand sales and when you look at their designs more closely it is very clear to me that they used artificial intelligence to generate these images and that's why in this video i'm going to show you how to use mid journey to create these travel poster types of designs how to prepare them for print and then publish them to etsy through printify First of all, I'm going to give you a few tips right here on Etsy for identifying products or shops with demand. So in this case, this poster right here for Amsterdam is what made me aware of this store. And first of all, you can see how many people have added this to their cart. In this case, only four, but that is still a decent amount. This goes up to 20 plus, by the way. So even if 100 people have added it to their basket, then it will still say 20 plus on Etsy. And scrolling down further, another good indicator for demand is if you click on reviews for this shop and change this from suggested to most recent if you see multiple reviews in the same day so here we've got the 7th of June three times in a row if you see that then this shop is definitely making a lot of daily sales because most people don't even leave a review for their products so in order to get three in the same day you need to be making at least like 20 sales a day for the most part. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can also see the favorites right here, which also always gives you an idea if people really like this design. If this is in the hundreds or thousands, then the demand is usually really high for this product. Now from there on, if you actually move on to their store, you can get a better idea as well for how well this person is doing. If you scroll all the way down to the about section. So here it says they've been on Etsy since 2023. So obviously not very long. And if you sort the reviews by most recent again and go all the way to the last page, you will quickly see when they received their very first review, which in this case is the 18th of February. So that is not a long time ago. Since then, they've made 2000 sales. And a quick bonus tip right here, if you've got the Chrome extension ever be installed, which I will leave a link to in the description, this is essentially a niche research tool for Etsy. Then you can pop out this bar on the left-hand side whilst you're on someone's store page and click on product analytics and this way you can analyze all the listings in the store at once. So if we click on analyze more listings right here, it's going to pull them all into this and we can list or sort this, for example, by views. And this way you will quickly get an indication as to which posters are getting the most attention, the most traffic within this store. You see all the names right here and the links, the thumbnails. So this will give you a really good indication of what to design first. Next up, you need to head over to midjourney.com and create an account that you can then link to Discord. Now, you need to have at least a $10 subscription plan with Midjourney to use your images commercially. If you don't want to pay anything, there is a free alternative called leonardo.ai. This tool is not quite as good as Midjourney, but it's still very decent and you don't have to pay to use it. In case you're wondering what my settings are, I'm just going to show you this. So I'm using Midjourney version 5.1 and medium style, very straightforward settings right there. And the prompt we're going to use, first of all, type in forward slash imagine. And the prompt is this right here, which you can copy and paste from the description down below. Essentially within these brackets right here at the start, I've put various different sites from around the world. Now you can also put in city names, you can put in country names, specific islands, there's various different travel poster types of destinations that you can type in right here. And next up, we've got a few keywords that give us the travel poster style. So flat design, not too complex. Then I've added a color scheme of turquoise, green and pink, which you can obviously modify to your own liking. You can change the colors. You can add other keywords such as pastel or vibrant. Then I've also added long shot at the end to try and get sort of a long distance view or a far out view of the subject rather than a close up, which would be difficult for a travel poster. And at the end of this prompt, I've added dash dash no 
and I've put a few keywords of things that I don't want to be part of the image to make life easier. The aspect ratio I've changed to five by seven, which is just one option that's worked for me. You don't have to use this exact aspect ratio, but in most cases you want your posters to be taller than they are wide. Once you hit enter, Midjourney is going to ask you whether you want to create six prompts. You can also show them right here. So these are the different ones that are going to be created. You can change them as well. So feel free to edit this template. Obviously change these locations. These are just some presets so you can understand how this whole process works. Click submit if you're happy and then yes to actually paste all of these prompts. Once your images have been generated, you can look through them. You might have to rerun some of the prompts with this button right here because not all of the images will always turn out perfect from the start. You've got the option to upscale the images with these buttons right here with the U and you can create variations of a specific image if you like it very much. So now we're going to get some similar ones to this one right here. Now a few things to look out for right here with these images is that you have a bit of very clean simple space either at the top or the bottom where you can put some text. So this is if you want to add the location to your poster um, you don't have to do that but it definitely helps and bear in mind this is only one type of wall art niche or poster niche there is various other things you can do like very minimalistic graphics you can do animals you can do more photography type of things if you're looking for inspiration in terms of prompts or what to create you can look obviously through the mid journey community feed where you will see really really nice results and the associated prompts and if you're stuck for ideas you can also check display.com which is a really nice website or marketplace place for wall art specifically. So that is going to give you a lot of ideas as to what to sell. Just ignore the section with the branded products such as Marvel, Star Wars, that sort of stuff. You're not allowed to sell yourself unless you have a license. Next up, we need to download the images that we're happy with and upscale them to make them better quality for print. So if you're on your mid journey profile, there's a quick way to download multiple images in bulk. So if you click this arrow in the top right corner, you can then just click and hold and select multiple images like this. And once you're done with your selection, you can then open the downloader and download them all together as a zip file. In order to increase the quality of our images to make sure they actually print crisp and don't get pixelated, we're going to use vectorizer.ai. This is currently free whilst in beta, and apparently the beta is going to last for another few months, which is really good news. So just drag and drop your images from your device onto this website, and it's going to process this. It only takes a few seconds to turn these into vector files, which are infinitely scalable. Now, vectors are ideal for these sorts of flat illustration types of designs. However, if you're generating photography with Midjourney or very detailed designs, then using an image upscaler is probably your best choice. And I'm going to leave two free upscalers in the description down below that you can test for your images. As you can see right here, if we zoom in, Vectorizer's done an amazing job at actually on the right hand side producing a very crisp, clear image or vector of our original terribly pixelated mid journey file. And all you have to do now is click on download over here. I like to change the shape stacking option to stack shapes on top of each other right here and then just click download. Once you've turned your image into a vector, you need to open it up in your design tool of choice. I'm using Photoshop right here, but you could also alternatively use Photopea, which is free and fairly similar to Photoshop itself. And all I did here is literally just add some text at the top. Um, I used this empty space or negative space right here, which is always really handy to have. Um, now, if you don't have such a clear background, as in my example, you can also add a bit of soft shadow in order to make the text more easy to read, but don't go over the top here. Too much shadow can look very, very horrible. The fonts, in case anyone is wondering, I'm just going to show you these. The top one is called Build Titling. This is the bold version. I'm pretty sure that is a free font, free for commercial use, that is. And the bottom font is Bieber's Neue, which is also a free font. Um, if I remember, I will leave a link to them in the description. If not, just Google the names, you will find a download link. And my thinking right here with the font itself was, first of all, I want to have quite a bit of space 
around the words. If we made this really big like this um, and sort of crammed it into the corners, this would look a lot less professional because in design, you want to have some negative space. You want to give the, the words some room to breathe. Kind of imagine it like a, a room, a living room. You don't want to have every corner of the living room cluttered with furniture, right? You want to have some space around the furniture to feel like you can actually breathe in the room. Also, this is going to help us later on with the different dimensions of posters that we're going to sell, as well as with the mock-up side of things. If we need to cut off a bit of the side or the top, we will still be able to see the text clearly. An alternative option to display this text if you struggle with making it visible is this right here. This is what a lot of people do with travel posters. Just have a bit of a white frame and then put the text in matching colors to the design so I matched the purple trees right here and this sort of violet dark color as well for the bottom text so that is a, an alternative option that can work quite well in many cases it just takes a little bit longer to set up but remember once you've got a template configured you can use that same template for all of the other locations and destinations that you use you just have to swap out the actual vector graphic change the text and that's it and one important thing to note is that the dimensions I used right here are 7500 pixels wide by 10,500 pixels high. That makes sure that even some of the highest or biggest poster sizes are still going to be covered and have a high DPI. Make sure to save this as a JPEG file. Export as is the function in Photoshop that will get you these large dimensions. I've got the quality set to the highest, number seven, then just click export down here at the bottom. Now that we've got our designs ready, all that's left is actually publishing them to Etsy. So there's two things you need right here. First of all, an Etsy store. So if you're new to Etsy and you want to open a new one, it usually costs 20 cents per listing. But if you use my referral link in the description, you will get your first 40 listings for free, which is highly recommended. It will save you some money when getting started. Once you've opened your store, you also want to create a Printify account, which you can then link with Etsy in order to to fulfill your orders automatically. I will leave a free sign up link to Printify in the description as well. And I will jump into the dashboard right now to show you how to start listing your posters. So the first thing you need to do in Printify is connect your store. So you can do that in the top right hand corner right here, click add a new store, and then just use the Etsy feature right here to connect. That is very easy and straightforward. Once that's done, you can head over to the catalog. Over here on the right hand side, we've got post also notice there's another category right here called canvas that's another type of wall art that you could publish once you're done with your posters it's a bit more expensive but more of a premium product that some people would be happy to spend more money on once you're inside of the posters category you get a lot of choices in terms of what to pick right here there's framed posters there's different types of them but I would usually just go with the best seller right here at the top you can also see the difference in pricing so with the free printify account you've You've got the $4.66 option for the printing. If you are subscribed to Printify Premium, you get 20% discount on all of your products. So that is what you see in green right here underneath. Once you've clicked into the product of your choice, you will get a list of fulfillment partners. In this case, there's only one option, so the choice is fairly easy. But if you have a longer list, you can check the rating right here and obviously the pricing in terms of shipping and printing as well as average production time will play into your decision. Once you've made your choice, click on start designing. Next up, you need to drag and drop your post design into the Printify window so it gets added to your product and to your library. And once that's done, you want to head over to product variants up here and make sure all of the sizes are selected. And if we hit update now, we've got all of the different sizes over here and we need to do some adjustments because these sizes essentially have different aspect ratios. So we will configure the nine by 11 first. We can just move this down a little bit so we can see the text more clearly. And then for the other sizes, we're going to always hit make a specific design for this size. So if we click this, we can now realign this and it won't interfere with our original placement. We'll do this for 12 by 18 as well. Move this up to the top. As you can see, we've now still got some gaps right here. So a quick way to fill this out is by clicking this right here, fill to placeholder. There you go. As you can see, some of the edges get cut off, but that's not a problem. Next size, make a specific design for this. 
here it's actually not too bad we can just move this up a tiny bit and you want to complete that for all of the other sizes as well and make sure that the dpi by the way is always uh, over 300 ideally that's why you want to save in quite a large pixel size to begin with once you're done you can hit preview over here and then if you're happy with the result click on save product in the bottom right corner next up we need to select our primary mock-up and the thing is a lot of these mock-ups are not very good looking they're okay i do quite like this one to show sort of a close-up of the uh, printed poster right there but besides that these are not very great so in order to fix this if you want to have better looking listings which is a massive part of actually getting sales you can use use the service like place it to get way way better and more professional looking mock-ups as well as video mock-ups and there's even some free ones that you can get from place it so I'm going to show you how to create those right now so here we are on place it I will leave a link to this site in the description down below if you want to check it out for yourself and what you can do in the search mask up here is essentially type in wall add mock-up and then you've got a few options you could put free at the end to see the free range which is not massive but it gives you some options you could also put video if you want to specifically look for video mock-ups um, but let's just have a quick peek at the free ones for now so there is definitely some better ones here than uh, the, the printify defaults but you don't really have a massive amount of choice in terms of video mock-ups there is a few options and i actually used some earlier on in this video to show you an example this one is quite nice and the benefit to using video mock-ups is that once a customer hovers over your listing a video starts playing and I'm guessing most of you prefer watching a video than looking at images that's why you're watching a YouTube video right so that definitely helps with getting some more clicks through to your listing there's some cool options right here obviously you will need to have the right format if it's landscape that is not ideal and I'll show you how to actually create one of these videos in a minute if you just want normal images type in wall art mock-up and you will see a variety of good examples come up right here there's 277 results I quite like this one right here in the top left corner these two are quite good but if you click into some of these you will also get more suggestions on the right hand side where you can also sometimes find some real gems so in order to create one of these video mock-ups just select the one that you want to use then you need to select an image from your device obviously you'll want to upload your poster design but they don't accept very massive files like 7,000 10,000 pixels so you might have to save it in a smaller scale and what comes up here is essentially the crop for the mock-up so in this case I need to increase the size slightly so it fills out this highlighted square essentially so once you're done hit crop at the bottom the audio I would just mute because that's not necessary for a mock-up you can see a quick preview image right here but in order to actually preview the entire video you have to click on play all slides and then it's rendering the video out right here which is very quick usually only takes about half a minute right and there we go the mock-up has been finished Finished. it looks really really neat and it's definitely a bit of an eye catcher if someone sees that in the search results if you want to download it just click this purple button underneath it'll get added to your queue up here and you will also get notified via email once the mock-up is ready to download now one thing to note here is you can't upload the mock-up directly to printify you will have to add it to your listing once it's been published to Etsy and then you can just delete some of the old printify mock-ups which you don't want to keep so when it comes to creating your listing data, there's a few ways you can help with finding keywords right here and creating a good listing. So first of all, the obvious one is looking at best sellers within your niche on Etsy, see what they're using in their titles and use that for inspiration. Secondly, you can use something like Top Bubble Index. They have a free Etsy tag generator. You just type in a primary keyword and it will give you related keywords to use within your listing. And thirdly, you could also use Everbee, which is the research tool for Etsy that I showed you at the beginning. They have a keyword research tab where you can type in specific primary keywords and it will show you associated tags with the related search volume. So here it's really handy that you get the search volume as well to make a better choice for which keywords to include in your own listing. If you want to learn how to create and sell pattern designs with Midjourney, then make sure to check out this video next where I walk you through my entire process.